So today I've been practicing It Smells Like Teen Spirit. I've moved on to the next section of this after the hello section. And this bit's quite like poignant, I think, in the piece because it's, for my part, it's quite like a, it's a higher string, it stands out more. Um, and I always remember when listening to this song, they just kind of used staccato and accents in a really like dynamic way to make this section really stand out. Um, we move through to the next bit of this um, section, as I like to call it and it comes to like double stopping and again like the use of like bow direction we start on like a down bow and then down bow and down bow and then it's just bowed out and then when you move on to the next part again it's two down bows so clearly like um the the band are kind of using all their accents and dynamics to really make this bit stand out using two down bows it's going to be like hard hitting because you're going to come off the string with your bow and then back down onto it and depending on, on how hard you want to come back at the string it makes it all the more um dynamic and stand out um so obviously you don't want to crash too hard back onto the string because that's going to make a horrible sound but coming back onto it and really making sure that you let the audience know that you've just kind of um, let your bow go off the string really makes a difference um, compared to the other sections of this piece. Uh, I would say the double stops here aren't as bad as some of the ones I've experienced, but they are ones that you have to get in tune to make sure that, obviously with all of them, but you have to really make sure they're in tune so that the some of the dissonance is here so make even the dissonance stand out like making sure it's in tune so that we hear the dissonance and show off the like you know somewhat alternative um melodies and methods that nirvana use in their music there is also in this next section when we go to the double stops there's a note in the first bar which you don't play you clap um so that's fully coming away from your instrument and going like that obviously this is a, actually a part that was intended for violin and cello so clearly they thought this was a necessary part of the actual thing that nirvana played um but to actually just do that in the middle of everything when people are just watching you play is quite a shock for the audience so I'd really like to try and get that in there but for now I haven't really fixed that in because it's all about timing making sure you're quick enough to get off your instrument to get back on your instrument um so I will try and fit that in at some point and I think it really does make a statement of this part um I'm sat in front of the sheet music right now but I'm doing it all by memory so what I'll do now is I'll just play you by memory what I've done today with this part. there you can see kind of where I break and where the claps would be in that part and also with the part just before that single notes I like to kind of put a slide into that top B flat um, which I think is really effective and makes it sound like kind of stand out and a bit you know different um, so I'm really trying to work out where exactly I want that slide because as you hear it's quite repetitive so making sure I don't overuse that slide, but kind of use it to my advantage. 
Um, next time I practice this, I'll take you through um, the first and second time bars, meaning like you repeat um, a part of the piece that I've just played um, and the piece, the part I've practiced in my last one. And then coming back to the second time bar, it's a bit different. So I'll talk you through that next time and talk you through the next section of the piece that hasn't been heard yet. So yeah, thank you for watching guys.